Welcome to this video about promoting next step for your marketing tools. This video is going to go over some things on how to market your book, uh, the book that you're either close to finishing or that you've already put out there. It will give you some ideas of the basics that I feel that you need to know about. And of course, there's more advanced versions of marketing that you can do, but this will give you a good idea of how to get started, especially if you're not familiar with marketing. Well, let's jump to it. Why do any marketing at all? If you wrote a great book, won't everyone come? Mm, that has not been my experience. The reality is that publishing numbers are up and readership is down. And what that means is that there are more books out there than there are readers reading them. You need to be able to have your book stand out. And if it doesn't, you just simply won't get the readership. I know this from personal uh, because I had published a book under a different pen name and I had this mentality of this book is fantastic and once I put it out there everyone will want to read it and word of mouth will make it build a readership. That is exactly not what happened. I ended up getting eight reviews for the book and it just it just went nowhere. It wasn't listed in Amazon search and I just didn't get that audience. So knowing what I know now I would do things differently. Your marketing plan should include a website with a newsletter that offers value to your reader. We're going to discuss all of these points, so this is just the overview. Social and media accounts where you can reach out to your potential readers or maybe just network with other authors. You can use author platforms, which are available at Amazon, Goodreads, and BookBub to have a professional bio and look online about your writing career. How do you gain reviews? Uh, reviews do build credibility and they are very important, but how can you get? And there's also paid ad systems. Amazon has a Amer uh, Amazon Marketing Services, which is AMS. There's Facebook and there's also BookBub. We're going to go into those a little bit more in depth. However, this talk will not go over how to make ads for those systems. That is a week long course in itself and I'm not going to have enough time here to cover that in the slideshow. There's also in-person events where you do book signings, conventions, or some sort of presentation. So the first thing you need to do is build your website. A website should have some basic things on it, and you'd be surprised at how many people don't hit these basics. Uh, you, you need some sort of newsletter sign-up. How do people get a hold of you? I prefer Mailer Light, and that will be in the notes attached to this slideshow video audio track that will give you some information about it but that's who I prefer to use on my website however you still need some sort of sign up that offers something a free book a free story some sort of exclusive content behind the scenes that you're only offering to people that sign up to the newsletter need a list of all your books that are published and where to buy them please include all the links if you have quote, gone wide with your book and it's available off of Amazon, like on Barnes & Noble or Kobo or Apple Books, you need to put that information out there. There's readers that won't buy from Amazon. They have a problem with Amazon and you don't want to not get those readers. So if you have your book someplace, have all the links where all your books are located. You should have a bio, a photo, which is called a headshot, and some contact information. Contact information because if someone wants to get a hold of you to produce your book into a movie or they want to do some sort of networking deal with you or the media wants to contact you, you need some way that they can reach out to you. You need links to all of your social media accounts and this is where I see a lot of authors making mistakes. Uh, for example, I've gone to at least five author websites deliberately in researching this, and they did not have their Goodreads accounts there. Uh, but they were on Goodreads because I was going to network with them. So again, if you are on a social media platform, have it on your website and have it on all of your pages of your website. You can't guarantee that the first page that someone will see will be your home page. Uh, they may come in on a blog that you had written about, or maybe they came in on the, the page that lists all your books for sale. So you need to have your social media contacts on every page of your website. Have a blog. The reason why I highly recommend a blog is it's an easy way of generating content 
that you can use across all your social media. So for example, if you write a blog, I write my blog and it goes to my Amazon author profile, it goes to my Goodreads account, and it also goes to my Facebook account. So by writing one blog, I've made three contacts with readers on different various social media platforms. And even if someone doesn't come actually to your blog blog, it keeps you active on social media. It shows that you're doing things, that you're not one of these writers who've disappeared. And you also need a calendar of events. It doesn't have to be fancy, but once you start making contacts and you start doing events, you want your readers to know where you're going to be. If you're going to be at a convention or speaking or a book signing, you need to have a calendar of events to let them know. It also lends some legitimacy to the fact that you're a professional. You're doing things. You're out there. You have stuff going on. Your website newsletter, let's talk about that. What is it, how do you do it, and why would you do it? The newsletter is your direct line to your fans. It's you talking to your fans. It's a great way to build fandom uh, because people start getting an idea of who you actually are and as a person, and then they can connect with you more easily. I use my newsletter to form what is called a street team, and a street team is your your little band of merry men and women, these super fans who are going to help you launch your book or provide you beta readers and be an integral part of your building your success. Your newsletter list can be swapped to grow your list. I'll go into that in more detail. You do not provide the actual emails to your list. You're just sharing links, and I will explain that later. And if you lose your social media or if your social media gets hacked or the system is down, you, newsletters allows you to have a chance to contact fans. For example, my Instagram account, I was doing a book launch and Instagram was loading up new changes to their program and the whole platform slowed down for 48 hours. And that was the very 48 hours I was doing my book launch. If you have a newsletter, you can call on your fans to help you if things kind of go sideways. Here's some newsletter tips that I think can help you out. You have to offer some sort of real value to your reader. And I think this is where authors get very blank in their mind about, well, what can I do? I, I don't know about what real value is. I think that has happened because we th we've exaggerated what value means in this society. We think, oh, value, I have to give them free books. Oh, value, I have to give them a $100 Amazon gift card. No, uh, there's other things of value to your reader. What you've got to do is figure out what that value is. And that comes from knowing who your reader is. If your reader just really enjoys reading, for example, fantasy stories, because you write fantasy, one of the things that you can do offering value to your reader is in newsletters listing other books that they might be interested in that are on sale. We'll go into that later. You can offer them a behind the scenes. You can give them the first peek at your book covers. You can let them know that they'll be the ones that you'll be asking to become beta readers. Giving them the first chance at looking at something or being involved in your process is another way to excite your readers. I blog about twice a month. I tried doing once a week and it was just on top of everything I have to do. The main thing is, is you want to stick to some sort of schedule. I wouldn't blog any less than once a month. And I really think once a week is probably the minimum. So four times a month minimum, you need to be blogging or putting something on your blog. Keep your newsletter brief. You don't have to get wordy or complicated. Most people aren't going to read a very long, complicated newsletter anyway. They just don't have the time. So uh, keep it chatty. Keep it of interest to your readers, but don't go out of your way to make it like a novel. They're not looking for that. So how do you get some newsletter ideas? Here is some places that you can look. For example, subscribe to other authors that are in your genre. They can give you some ideas. You don't have to copy them. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just going and getting their newsletter and saying, oh, well, this is a neat idea. I like that idea. Another thing you can do is when books go on sale in your genre, you can go ahead and list them in your newsletter. So, for example, 
I'm writing books about fantasy, and if uh, a huge fantasy author came on sale and I got a notice about it, that their books were 99 cents, well, wouldn't I want to, to... to provide that information to my readers. It shows that, hey, you care about them. Don't worry that providing other book links would be a problem for competing with your brand. All it does is build your brand. Why? Because readers look at it and they go, oh, this person really knows what's happening in their genre. I'm going to follow them because they're going to be able to tell me about new authors or books that I would be interested in. And they're speaking with an air of authority. You can also look at what's on the calendar. There's the obvious holidays of Halloween, Valentine's, Christmas that might tie into your book. But there's also these weird, like little bizarre holidays, like, you know, National Cookie Day. These things can fit into your book. You might be, you know, really that might be an idea that you can use to make a blog about. If you just do a search online, you'll see lots of lists, like 100 blog ideas or what to blog about, and I'll give you a list. Will the list work for you on everything? No, but you can uh, use it to get some ideas. Make sure you offer the news in your newsletter as an exclusive, that these things are things that you're only offering to people that are on your newsletter. That makes it special. I mentioned newsletter swaps. What are those? Uh, You can do it through several different services. The two that I use is BookFunnel, which is very well known, and Story Origin, which is a close runner to BookFunnel. They both offer a lot of the same services. However, if you're just starting out, Story Origin, in my opinion, is a little bit easier to get welcomed in on these newsletter swaps. Book funnel, most of the newsletter swaps, you have to have a a newsletter list of X amount and it's harder to break in. So what you do on a newsletter swap is that you don't share the actual emails of your newsletter. You'll just put in your newsletter a link, a special link that book funnel or story origin will provide about the other person's book. And then you know, so if you're sharing with Mary, Mary will put in her newsletter uh, your book and a link to your book, and then you in your newsletter will put a link to Mary's book. And all that is tracked using Book Funnel or Storage Origin, which actually tracks your newsletter to make sure that the link has been used and how many times it was clicked on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But here's a caution. Don't go crazy with this. This is what I did. I went kind of crazy. You need to concentrate on books that your readers would really like to see or would enjoy reading. So they have to fit your genre and they would have to appeal to your reader. For example, I write fantasy books. So putting a link in my newsletter to an erotica book probably wouldn't be the best fit. Putting a link in my newsletter to a Christian romance book probably would not be a good fit. So you need to look at what you're wanting to do, what you will be publishing, and how will these books fit into it. And if it's a good fit, go for it. It's a great way to build your newsletter. There's another way to build your newsletter, and that's called a newsletter magnet. I mentioned that in another of my slideshows. I'm going to go into it again here. Uh, The trick to this is that one, your first book is listed as they called perma-free. That means that it's permanently free on the Amazon system and other websites. Then in the back of that book, you'll put a link to book number two where they can get it for free if they subscribe to you. So book number two would only be available to newsletter subscribers. And that newsletter is, of course, on your website. So you can see the connection here to why you might want to have more than one book before you jump all into this. The two books I recommend are Newsletter Ninja and Reader Magnets. This will tell you all about how to make a newsletter on your website, how to do it, and how to do the book number one and book number two. It is a lot to wrap your mind around, so I recommend reading these two books and thinking about it and going and looking at other authors and seeing what uh, they're doing and how you want to do it. Let's talk about social media here. This is a big, huge topic, and I'm just going to touch the very top of the iceberg on it. I want to let you know before we get to talking about it, don't worry if you don't have tens and thousands of 
followers on your social media account. The main thing is, is that you get started, you learn how to use it, you start slow, and you use it to build a good brand. Let's say that you only have, in three years, 5,000 followers. Well, if those 5,000 followers are all tremendously supportive and they buy your books and they leave reviews versus another person has 20,000 followers, but they don't get engagement, they don't get the likes, they don't get people buying their product, it doesn't, it doesn't come down really to a number game. Having more followers isn't really the best thing. The best thing is having quality followers, people that are actually interested in what you have to say. So keep that in mind when you do your social media. You're not there to be a friend to all people. You're there looking for your reader and to be a friend to them. The rule of thumb on social media is 80% content and 20% sales content. Uh, Do not break this rule unless it's like 79 to 31. You need to really understand this. I probably this is the biggest mistake I see by authors. They are constantly selling on their social media platform. And what they're going to do is they're shooting themselves in the foot about this. No one cares. No one cares to see you publishing your about your book constantly. I follow several people on Instagram that are authors. I actually follow a lot of authors on Instagram. And I see them making this mistake all the time. And honestly, once I get, every time you post on Instagram and it's about your book and how it's on sale, and this goes on and on and on for weeks, mute. And if you think that I'm doing it and I'm an author, you can make a bet that everyone else is doing it too. You're not winning readers over. You're ticking them off. I asked my husband about this because he's more easygoing than I am, and he's also uh, not an author. And I said, hey, uh, I know you're following XYZ. What do you think of that account? And he goes, oh, I've stopped following him because all they do is sell their book. I was like, yeah, that's what I thought. So you need to be understanding about that and how that works. So Uh, Some other things hitting that on the head, you need to park all the social media with your name. So let's say for me, I'm not on Twitter, but I need to park that Bird Nash Twitter name so then someone else is not going to use it at a later date uh, for doing things that I wouldn't, I might be mistaken that that person is me. Or someone can maliciously grab the account name and pose as you, especially if you get really super popular. Again, don't think that you have to do everything right out of the box. Start with one platform, learn it before you move on to another one. Uh, I usually recommend six months. So if you're starting on Facebook, you spend six months on Facebook, learning the system, reading about it, figuring out what works for you, figuring out what doesn't work for you, and growing some readership before you would move on to something else, such as Twitter or Instagram or Pinterest. And once you publish a book, there's certain places you can suddenly get an author's page. You can't get it until you publish a book, but that would include Amazon, Goodreads, and BookBub, which we'll talk about here in a little bit later. Let's talk about each one of the social medias. This first one we're going to talk about is Facebook. Here's some general things I recommend that you start to do. One, do not use your personal page, even if you have a personal page that is your author name. So if I had a personal page that was Bird Nash, that is not the place I would be promoting myself as an author. I would make a business page, such as Bird Nash Books. So there's different reasons why you want to do this, but one big reason is without a business page, you cannot make ads on Facebook. So if you do plan at any point in the future of doing a Facebook ad, and you never know, then you need a business page. You can follow other Facebook pages, which you can then share on your on your page. So find pages that offer content that would be of interest to your readers. Uh, for example, for me, I uh, do I follow several accounts that have uh, nature oriented pictures that I'm going to want to share on my. Facebook page. I also follow some groups that are very pro-woman and positive mind thinking that I also will occasionally share on my Facebook page. So for example, if you were a historical romance writer, you would want to follow other business pages that 
do have some sort of orientation that would fit with your historical romance. Let's say that you write historical romance during the Victorian time period. You might want to follow other Facebook pages that have a Victorian time period slant so you can occasionally share their content. It doesn't mean that you copy their content. You share it, give them attribution, and then you add some something like, I saw this really great um, article about Victorian dress and then you have their, their post there. Join Facebook groups that provide value to you as an author. Uh, There's several of them out there, and I've actually found them of great help. You don't have to become super involved in them. Just following and reading can help you learn a lot more about this kind of business. Follow your comp authors that are successful in the genre that you're writing in. So, for example, if I was writing... Uh, horror books, I would be following Stephen King. You need to follow those people to see what they're doing. How are they making a success of it? What are they doing out there to um, promote themselves? And how can you use their ideas? Not that you're going to copy them. Don't do that. But just use it as a way to spark ideas on your own. Of like, oh, that looks really cool. I could take that idea, change it, and do this. Now, Many successful indie authors love Facebook. There's a group that I'm in right now, and that's what they talk a lot about is Facebook. I just personally don't like Facebook, and I won't be advertising on their platform. But like any of the platforms that you might want to advertise, what I suggest you do is, one, research it. There's lots of books, YouTube videos, online courses, some of which are free, some of which you have to pay. Always get a recommendation before you join a paid course. And... You need to test that market by doing smaller ads first. You don't jump in with your big, huge budget and start plastering everywhere with ads. Neither do you just go jump off the deep end and go, oh, I'm going to run a Facebook ad today. No, it takes thought and it takes a budget. It takes some testing. And that's true of any of these sorts of social media uh, advertising. They all take testing of the market. Twitter. Many authors love this platform. They think that it's a great place to network with other authors. And also they have had some success in finding book clubs there. There's some groups that will do what they call a Twitter blast, where they'll, if you're on Twitter and you're very involved in Twitter, you might consider that as an ad, something to do with your advertising and marketing budget. Uh, for me personally, I don't use Twitter just because I think it's a time suck. But that doesn't mean that you can't use it or that you might not really love Twitter. It, again, is a very personalized thing here. Find what you love and do a lot of it. Instagram. It's owned by Facebook. It uses photos and hashtags to organize the information. There's a group on Instagram called Bookagrammers. What they basically do is they take a photo of a book in a pretty setting and they post it on their account. Um, that can get you some publicity. However, I have found that they rarely do real book reviews. So if you're looking for book reviews, Bookagrammers are not going to give you that. If you want to get some marketing about your book cover and maybe some publicity about that, then Instagram could be an outlet. But again, do not see a bunch of reviewers there. It does have a great author network on Instagram for indie writers that you might want to check out. There's some great hashtags you can follow and connect up with other writers. Pinterest, you may be very familiar with, but in case you're not, it's geared towards images and video. It's a search engine. The great thing about Pinterest is that once you post a pin there, and if it goes viral, you can get a lot of visits. I have a DIY home blog where I just post stuff about my DIY projects at home, and I posted a project on there. It's been over five years ago, and that ended up going viral and I got a lot of visits to my blog which I still get visits. I get maybe 100 to 300 visits a month just because of that one post, people checking out my page. So if it does take a little while to figure it out and here I've got three authors that have some interesting ways that they do Pinterest. If you're interested in Pinterest but you don't quite know how you want to make it work for you, I would check out these three accounts. They have some neat ideas on them. For example, Lucinda Brandt 
hers is all historical to a time period and she has a lot of different boards that are about that so check it out see what you think you might get some good ideas there YouTube YouTube's only going to work for you if you like to do yourself with video if you don't like video then forget it it's not going to work but you can do book trailers on YouTube and you can do your podcast on YouTube and you can do some little short uh, videos of what you're reading or what you're doing again it really depends upon you as an individual what you like to do and where you're going to want to present yourself the main thing you need to remember is if you're always selling on social media you're going to lose the the network game you're not going to get people who want to network with you they they simply will walk away I talked about that earlier but if you're posting non-stop books on your Instagram or your Facebook about how your books on for sale, your books for sale, your books for sale, your books for sale. No one wants to hear that constantly. It's like being next to a megaphone and someone shouting in your ear. They will turn you off and you'll never know why you're losing. Let's talk about getting reviews. It's a big part of promoting your book, marketing your book. Uh, reviews are a necessary evil. People want to see reviews. They want to know before they buy what they're getting into. And that's where a review helps. Um, some places to put reviews. Amazon has a very strict review policy. And what I have discovered is some readers will re even refuse to review there. They don't want to post there because of this strict policy. Be aware that if you ask for a review, people might say, well, I don't want to review on Amazon. You need to offer them different options. And some other options would be Goodreads. Goodreads is owned by Amazon, but they're looser about their policy. Barnes & Noble, few people review on the Barnes & Noble platform, so a review there can really stand out if you can get a few reviews on that platform. BookBub is a reader network service. It delivers discounted books to an email inbox to people who have signed up to their service. And they also allow reviews there. And they don't seem to have a very strict policy. So again, a good place where you can have people review. And then other book markets like Kobo, Apple Books, Google Play, they all have places where people can review. So let's talk about the two different types of reviews. There's editorial reviews and there's reader reviews. I won't go into reader reviews. I think you kind of self-explanatory. You know what that is. Editorial reviews you may not be as familiar with. They're usually written by a trade publication or a group such as Library Journal, Kirkus Reviews. There's some sort of publisher, bigwig, who is not exactly connected to the books being published. They're not a publishing house, but they review things that are being published. And these reviews have a lot of worth to bookstores and to libraries because it's kind of a professional stamp on your book saying, yes, this book is blank. So editorial reviews uh, can be helpful. Ways to get reviews. You can forget the family thing. Stop screaming about why your family hasn't read your book or why they haven't reviewed your book. Literally, it's against Amazon's policy for your family to review your book. It's against their policy. So if they found out that you two were connected, and trust me, they know that you're probably connected because anyone that has bought through Amazon is being tracked all through Amazon's system. They're going to remove the review at some point. So forget the family. What you want to do is start networking with your social media. You start looking for people that like you, that uh, start following you because they're interested in what you have to say. And you can contact these people directly. But if you do, first of all, don't do it as soon as you meet them. Wait till you have a connection. Wait until you reply back to them. You build some sort of connection through comments or likes or follows. And address the person by their name and keep a record of who you contacted. You don't want to reach out to John, who you've reached out already 10 times before, and ask again to review your book. So... You can find these people on social media, be polite, be nice, address them by their name, keep a record of who you've contacted so you don't contact them again. And ways to get reviews also include 
looking at indie authors who are publishing in your genre. I actually review fantasy books. I'm open to people contacting me about them, but you should also understand that sometimes I just simply won't review your book for whatever reason. Bloggers, bookagrammers, and YouTubers will often sometimes maybe review indies. It depends upon their policy. So read their policies before you approach them. And try approaching a smaller accounts before you jump in and try to get the 10,000 follower account. So by smaller accounts, I mean less than 5,000. Put on your website some sort of policy about how you're going to give out your copies to reviewers. And you can go to my website, Bird Nash, B-Y-R-D, and look at the contact or about page, and there's some information about how I give out copies on reviews. And this is something you can check out. I don't mind if you copy the format of how I did it. Um, but you do need some sort of policy, because once you start asking people to review, everyone's going to want a print book for free. And You'll, it's just going to become way too expensive for you to do that. And you can ask for reviews in the back of your book. I read one uh, book, ebook that was saying, oh, if you did that, you're going to end up increasing your book reviews by a thousand tenfold. Uh, that didn't happen to me. <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt. But it is a great place in author notes to politely ask for a review. Promotional services. Yes, you can pay for a review, but what you're going to get is what they call an editorial review. When you pay for a review, which Kirkus allows you to pay them for a review, I wouldn't do it, but they do have that option, that you can then get an editorial review. This, this review really doesn't, isn't published like on uh, the as a reader review, you have to do it in a special place, which I'm going to show you. On each book, underneath the description of the book, there's a place that you'll see editorial reviews. And this is something that you, as the author, can put in on your book. Here I'm showing my page for Never Date a Siren, I believe. Yeah, and I have selected certain little bullet points that I wanted out of my Amazon and Goodreads reviews and I posted them here for people to see. It really makes the page look super nice but I didn't pay for any of these reviews. These are reviews that people gave me and I just selected. But if you did pay for a review this is where it would go. Another way you can get reviews is using promotional services like blog tours or book tours or bookagram tours, all of these will get you possibly reviews. Now, this isn't you paying for reviews. This is you paying for uh, the service. You're paying for the tour. You're not paying for reviews. Paying for reviews that you're going to post as a reader is not allowed by M Amazon, period. So you would be breaking the rules. But what you're doing is you're paying for the tour, which is they're posting about your book on social media. They don't guarantee you reviews, and they don't tell you who will be reviewing you. And you have no control over what that review will say. Here are some groups about book that will book tours. I personally have used Itsy Bitsy, and I'm using Silver Daggers. However, before jumping in and using any of these people, you need to look for reviews and figure out what they're going to offer in terms of services and if that will fit with what you're doing and what you want. Itsy Bitsy, for me, has been really good. I do think that if you're writing romance, it might even be better than what I'm writing. Fantasy is always harder to get uh, reviews on fantasy books. But uh, I had another author friend who actually had... I want to say a bad experience with Itsy Bitsy, but a disappointing experience experience with Itsy Bitsy. And then what I thought was very nice was the lady that runs Itsy Bitsy actually reached out to her and told her that she wanted to run her book for free longer because she didn't feel like the woman got enough notice. I like Itsy Bitsy. Uh, I think it's good value for the money. Uh, Silver Daggers, I'm doing... Next week, not sure, I'll let you know. And then there's these other ones, Lola's blog tours, Espresso book tours, promotional book tours. One thing you need to understand is some of these book tours will not do indie books. So you need to look at their policies. I do believe all of these have an indie option.
Now, some quick do's and don'ts. You cannot give anything to someone for reviewing, period. That You can't even give them a, an Amazon gift card. That's against policy of Amazon. You can give away books, uh, although Amazon seems to keep flip-flopping on this. So I don't know what to tell you. Read Amazon's policy. Decide what you're going to do. Realize that when you ask someone for a review, you're not going to tell them what to say. Do not do that. You're just going to let them have a chance to review your book. And you're not going to criticize their review and you're not going to tell them what to say. My thoughts on reviews, uh, some way to make this a little bit easier on you, but still to keep going and gaining traction. Reach out to someone new every day and see if they'd be interested in reviewing your book. Uh, address them by name, be polite about it. If they say no, you don't get upset. You just say, oh, thank you for your time. I appreciate you thinking about me, etc. If you're going to gift ebooks for a review through Amazon platform, which I like to do because then it makes it an official review when they do review, lower your ebook price to 99 cents on the day that you're going to gift it. And if you're gifting a physical book, realize that's kind of quite a financial commitment. It's a big financial commitment because you have to mail the book. So just realize that. And you a couple of quickie things that you can't gift ebooks on Amazon outside the U.S. if you're in the U.S. So I ran into this problem. I had some UK reviewers and Australian reviewers who agreed to review my book. And then I found out that I could not gift the ebook from the U.S. to those countries. Mailing a physical book outside the U.S. is also extremely expensive. Uh, even if you get the book at a discounted price, for example, mailing a 5x8 book from where I live to the U.K. is at least $20. So again, on your website, have a policy of what you're going to do and what how you're going to act it. Other ways to get reviews is through your street team. I've gone over that before, asking your beta readers to review, doing the paid book tours, and networking with other authors who do reciprocal reviews. If you do that, be careful. Don't use your author name on Amazon to do reviews. Amazon can be very angry about you reviewing other authors if they think there's some sort of return reciprocal agreement. So that can be very upsetting to them. So if you're an author and you want to review, you may want to consider reviewing on Goodreads or BookBub. They're not as strict about those review policies. The main thing to remember, though, is you are never going to complain about a review. Never. I've had several authors that I've reviewed that found out that I did review them. Then they complained to me about their four-star review and one of them got into a very long DM with me and wanting me to explain every reason why I didn't give her five stars. That person is now on my shit list. I'm not going to review or read anything else by her. I, she had, I'm not, no, no, no. This is what's going to happen to you if you complain about your reviews. Just, and to tell you the truth, it's not that bad to get negative reviews. People that are looking at, books to buy. If everything is a positive review, they're not going to believe the reviews. They simply won't. So having a mix of up and down reviews, five stars and one stars, that hopefully you get more five stars than ones, but they, they, it can't hurt you particularly. Don't get so worked up about it. Once you get your book published, there are several author platforms where you can establish yourself. And I'm going to go over kind of briefly why you would want to. On Amazon, there is an Amazon author page that you have to go claim after you've published your books. And on it, it'll list all your published books. It'll have a follow button. So people that follow you there will be notified when they get a new, when you have a new book out. It lets you put in a headshot in a bio. Your blog post can feed to this page. And you can also even put up video. Here's kind of an example of how mine looks right now. It shows all my books. It shows my um, my little profile there. It's showing my blog feed and my video trailers. Another platform is Goodreads. And this is owned by Amazon, but it's slightly different. It's not as visual oriented. Uh, it does let you, though, more importantly, put a link 
to your website, a direct link, which I love. It also has your blog post can feed there. You can put up questions or people can ask you questions and it shows what you're reading. So it gives your readers kind of a more personal view insight into what you're doing and what you're reading and what you like to read and maybe how you would write your book. BookBub. This allows you to gain reviews and it also allows you to gain followers, shows your published works. You can also leave a starred feedback review for other authors. Uh, Their review platform is actually very easy to use to recommend people. Um, I would recommend that if you're planning on running some BookBub ads that you put up a BookBub author page. And it's all free. All, all three of those options are all free. You don't have to pay for any of that. Let's talk about paid ads. Uh, I'm just going to go into it very briefly because I kind of feel like if you get to the point of paying for ads, you're really starting to get super serious about how you're going to promote yourself. And you usually have several books that you want to promote. The first thing to do is wait until you have more than one book to start promoting on ads. Why? Because you're going to get better ad money. People want to read and book binge, just like they movie binge. Or they want to, if they find an author they like, they want to buy everything by the author and read everything by the author. So you'll get more money for your, you'll get more bang for your buck if you wait until you have more books. Spend time researching the advertising platform and run test ads and decide what you want to accomplish with the ad. Uh, Is it to build a readership or is it to make money? Because there's two different ways you can go there and you need to know right in your head what you're going to do. For me personally right now, it's more about building readership. I'm a new author. I'm in my first year, about ready to end my first year in May, and I'm more interested in building my readership. The big three to advertise with is Amazon Marketing Services, which is Amazon ads, Facebook ads, BookBub ads. But let's hold your horses on this. You need to start thinking before you do this of how you're going to do it. Again, wait till you have more than two books. Read over the book that I said earlier about reader magnets because the same principle works with your advertising. Research the platform, run a test ad, test the graphics, test the reader market, find out who your comp authors are. And there's several great resources out here. One of them is BookBub, which I've talked about earlier. If you go on to their website, they'll have tons of free articles and all sorts of great goodies there for you to use that just will help you understand how to do it before you jump in and start spending lots of money. The BookBub is all part of a group of its emails that go directly to the reader. The reader has said what kind of books they like to read when they signed up, and then the um, the company orients those newsletters and those special deals towards what someone likes to read. So if someone likes to read romance, they should be getting more romance Uh, deals and if they like to read science fiction they should be getting science fiction deals now this isn't all clear cut and dry you need to read up about each one of these platforms bookbub is very focused towards comp authors so you pick a group of authors that you feel like their readers would enjoy your stuff and then that's who they market to Uh, robin reads is more of a hodgepodge of genres. I get an email from them and it, and it has everything from romance to fantasy to historical. So it's kind of a mix up. But what I recommend you do is that you subscribe first to their newsletter and you receive it several weeks, maybe even months, seeing how, they, how the ads come to you. What do they look like? What are people using as the big... Um, description that seems to get people interested in clicking why did you click or did you click and you'll need to run a discount on your book when you run for one of these ads that's how you qualify to be in the ad no discount well they don't take you then as an advertising person 
you stack the newsletter ad with other promotions for the best bang. So for example, you might want to stack a promotion here with a discount off your book to run it right after you did a blog tour where you got a lot of reviews. So think about stacking your ads, stacking your promotions to get more uh, traction. So there's also in-person events. Here's I'm just going to give you a few ideas of things that you could do. Uh, author book signings, book launches, speaking engagements, convention attendance, kind of reaching out to businesses that might be interested in your book, and doing special audiences. So like, for example, if your book is about a painter that lived during a certain time period and the museum is going to have some sort of art show that's based around this time period, that might be a good tie-in with your book that you might want to approach them. I do want to caution you, though, before jumping into some sort of stand that as a self-published author, you're in charge of everything, and that includes the promotion of that event. You may be at a bookstore, but how much is that bookstore going to promote that event? Mm, I don't know. So you need to be lining up some things on your own. You'll need a professional photo, which is called a headshot, and a bio. You need to be able to describe your book very shortly, with usually within under five minutes. It's called an elevator speech. It's your little sales speech. And if you've ever watched the Shark Tank, you know what I'm talking about. Handouts. You can use biz cards, bookmarks, book swag, like uh, post-it notes, keychains, whatever you kind of ties into your book. You'll need books to sell. How are you going to accept the payment? And you buy them wholesale through your printer. So if you're going through Amazon, Amazon provides the author a wholesale price. And if you are going through Ingram Spark, the same thing happens. If you have a newsletter list, see who's on the newsletter list that is local to the area where you're going to be doing your promotion. See if they can help. And again, remember that everything's going to come down to you on promoting this event. So if you can promote it yourself in addition to the bookstore and or in addition to the clothing store or in addition to the museum, you're going to find a much better turnout for your event. So here's just my marketing overview checklist. You need a working website and you need to be blogging maybe two to three times a week. You need to be able to collect emails for a newsletter need to have all the social media links on your website, please. And spend on your planning one day a week to learn some sort of marketing strategy. So one day a week, you don't write, you're focused on learning marketing. It, you're going to have to learn it if you're self-published. There's no way around it. You don't have to be a master at it, but you have to understand it and you have to know how to do it. There's so many free resources out there. Please take advantage of free before you start paying. I would buy books before you would start paying for a course just because you go into the course with more knowledge and you're going to gain more from the course. So and also if you're going to pay for a course always look for testimonials, get reviews, get recommendations before you jump into it because in my opinion a lot of these guys that are and it's usually guys who are offering these courses they're hustlers. So you need to know that they really know their stuff and that you're going to get value for signing up to that uh, workshop. Make a calendar plan for all your ads or promotions, just for your ads or promotions and what you're going to do. And then you're going to quickly see, am I doing enough or am I not doing enough? And then you need to be focusing on writing your next book because the best thing to sell your book is to have your next book out. That pushes your books up. Well, this ends this slideshow video. I appreciate you being with me here. If you have any questions, you can contact me at author at birdnash, B-Y-R-D, uh, dot com. There will be some additional learning materials, a fact sheet that goes with this that will give you hyperlinks to some of the resources that I mentioned. And, of course, this is one in a series of audio slideshows being offered on my website to people who sign up to my author resource section. Thanks again for being with me here at Bird Nash and you can also find me at Facebook where I have an author network group that you, if you haven't already joined it you might want to consider it. It's where we can kind of talk behind the scenes privately about things that are working for us or maybe they aren't working. Thanks again, and we'll hopefully you'll be selling online and making that million dollars and having those book deals.